Hello everyone, another lecture, a short lecture about hypothyroidism. We have already discussed all the previous conditions of thyroid as well as the discussion or introduction about the thyroid disorders. Um, <coughs> uh, what is hypothyroidism is simply when the thyroid hormones in the blood are low and uh, the important thing to know about hypothyroidism is what like um, whenever the, the thyroid levels in the body is low so what will be the clinical presentation of the patient uh, clinically which we will see again from my second lecture um, you can see uh, I give you a scenario like whenever we are going to see the patient they can complain of uh, weight gain, anorexia, increased sleep and uh, when you are going to check like uh, they are going to have the preference of summers or simply uh, they cannot uh, hold cold weather. Um, also you are going to see their skin, they will their, their BMI will be raised, they will gain weight. So um, uh, again, uh, this hypothyroidism is so common that uh, uh, you can say around 3% of the general population, uh, they have hypothyroidism. It is so common that uh, uh, I have seen many patients of hypothyroidism. Uh, I have seen the shortage of thyroxine in many of the labs uh, just because, you know, people... Uh, who have hypothyroidism, they have to take this thyroxine or L-thyroxine to be more specific on daily basis just to keep the thyroid hormone levels uh, normal in the blood. And uh, as a general rule, all the thyroid problems are very common in females than males and you can see over here the male to female ratio is 1 ratio 10 which means like 10 times more common in females than males. So most of the people or women when you will found them um, you will found them like adult age females in pediatrics uh, we already covered like where, what will happen when a patient a baby have hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism because uh, if there is they have uh, hypothyroidism uh, in infants you know it is going to uh, interfere with their development and they have many developmental problems uh, once they have this hypothyroidism in that case it is called as cretinism so uh, many of the patients uh, they have something called as subclinical uh, what is subclinical whenever anyone is showing the signs and symptoms of certain condition and we can appreciate that clinically on, on physical examination uh, that means like the clinical signs and symptoms are there or the clinical features are displayed but for example if there is a patient who on examination if you cannot appreciate any features of that condition or clinical features of that condition but in reality when you are going to check their TSH levels and you found that you know the TSH level is elevated which means that the thyroid hormone levels in the body is lesser. That's why the pituitary is making more and more TSH. So, uh, uh, but clinically, there, there is no sign and symptom. We call it as subclinical hypothyroidism. Many patients, they do have subclinical hypothyroidism. Um, so, um, <clears throat> see, like, class, it can be classified at, according to the time of onset like congenital or acquired it could be classified according to severity like I was talking about right now someone who is displaying clinical features uh, as compared to someone who have less thyroid hormones but uh, when you are going to examine them you are not finding any clinical features and site of dysfunction primary hypothyroidism of course uh, when the uh, problem or the pathology is in the thyroid gland, for example, 
uh, we discuss Hashimoto's thyroiditis. For example, in the previous lecture, I talked about uh, postpartum or radiation induced or drug induced hypothyroidism, right? And secondary is simply when the pathology is in pituitary. So what will happen that pituitary is going to uh, produce less of uh, thyroid stimulating hormone which as a result of that it is going to not stimulate thyroid gland to produce more and more hormones. And tertiary is when the pathology is above pituitary that is hypothalamus. So that this is a classification like how we classify this hypothyroidism. Um, etiology. So most common type of causes of hypothyroidism is the primary causes. As you can see the secondary and tertiary are uh, like rare. 90% of the patients you will found with primary hypothyroidism. Uh, of course you don't have to remember like we don't have to remember all this list but uh, many things will make sense when you are going to go to look them. Um, so inadequate thyroid hormone production secondary to intrinsic thyroid defect like just now I told you about uh, what you can say that uh, Hashimoto's or radiation or drug induced uh, iatrogenic when it is produced by someone due to some procedure like uh, whenever the patient have hyperthyroidism uh, we can use iodine-131 uh, to uh, basically destroy them. So this is like one of the way. Autoimmune and then there is a hypothyroid phase of subacute thyroiditis which we have already discussed and there are different drugs which can cause infiltrative diseases like sarcoidosis or amyloidosis, iodine deficiency. Uh, iodine deficiency is you can say it is the most common cause worldwide most common cause worldwide okay uh, but not in developed countries rather in developing countries and congenital and neoplasia secondary or tertiary are not so common and I already explained uh, why they are there so uh, I, I told you like this will be a short lecture because we have already covered this congenital hypothyroidism in our pediatrics lectures and uh, we have already discussed the clinical features in the first lecture so um, and this is like the Hashimoto which we have already discussed uh, like in the previous lecture you can see all these things and subclinical I already explained maybe you will not you're not going to find any uh, clinical features okay uh, so uh, simply uh, how we treat that hypothyroidism is uh, before treating hypo like discussing treatment of hypothyroidism uh, remember hypothyroidism have effects on like the thyroid hormones have effect on each and every cell of the body and whenever anyone have hypothyroidism so it is going to affect almost all the functions of the body or simply uh, like uh, if you will go system wise so generally these people who have hypothyroidism you know they gain weight they have fatigue cold intolerance and uh, they have bradycardia hypotension and uh, they have decreased exercise capacity they have weight gain, constipation, poor appetite and uh, in females especially one feature which is their uh, hypothyroidism can cause menorrhagia. Uh, menorrhagia means like increased amount of menses and uh, in males it can cause impotence as well. So uh, depending on that when you will see any patient with hypothyroidism uh, what we found is uh, their face uh, appears puffy or you can say uh, too much 
uh, due to weight gain, you will find the facial or periorbital edema in these patients. And when you will feel their skin, it will look uh, dry and rough. Okay. So, uh, like these are the features of hypothyroidism. Of course, we have discussed that discussed them uh, before. Um, uh, you one 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 issue with hypothyroidism and why it's important to treat is uh, its effect on different conditions. For example, whenever the patients have hypothyroidism, uh, what happens is uh, uh, they get hypercholesterolemia or their cholesterol levels they are increased in the body, and uh, that's the reason uh, it can predispose to uh, different heart conditions like myocardial infarction, for example. Okay. So uh, that that's one of the important thing, like why why we must treat you can say uh, subclinical hypothyroidism, which is written over here. Okay, so uh, simply uh, uh, like wh wh why we have to treat uh, just to reduce all the risk factors that, like which are the patients can be exposed of. So uh, the treatment is so simple, guys. Uh, like these are all the features which I was talking about. Uh, written over here uh, why I was talking about all this uh, things is bas uh, just to give you the connection how hypothyroidism can give different other clinical features like uh, or other sorry risk factors like heart diseases um, you can see over here these are again all the features which the patient will be having so treatment treatment is simply by giving l thyroxine you don't have to remember the dosages at this level because uh, uh, the important thing is to remember like we we give them thyroxine right and uh, uh, of course like they start giving with uh, what you can say a low amount of dosages and then they keep on increasing the dosages um, until the TSH level comes in what you can say in the normal values uh, you can see over here um, uh, like in elderly with ischemic heart disease what they do is like they give initial dosage of 0 0.025 milligram or you can say 25 microgram both are the same thing okay and then they increase like gradually over four weeks of time or every six weeks they keep on checking their TSH level and if the TSH level is still high, uh, which means like the, the thyroid hormone levels in the blood is not maintained, then they keep on increasing the dosages. Uh, so, uh, again, very important point is monitor improvement in clinical symptoms. Like on every visit after four weeks or six weeks, we keep on taking history from the patient, like either there is any improvement in, the, in their health or not. And one more thing is we check their TSH levels, okay? Uh, that like we have to bring the TSH levels in normal range you can say okay uh, so once you know uh, for example a patient came and he have hypothyroidism uh, what we are going to do we are going to provide them with thyroxine and uh, after four weeks we will see how they, they are going with that we will do a TSH and then we will uh, increase the dose or decrease the dose according to that but once you know um, uh, what you can say the dose the TSH level is maintained okay so or the maintenance dose is achieved in any patient then what we have to do uh, we ask them to do an annual uh, TSH uh, test okay J just to see like how 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 they are doing mm, uh, so this is very important to know so annually they they are checked uh, of course like if they have any symptoms they can come anytime but if their life is going well, so annually TSH levels are fine, uh, by the way. So, uh, uh, one thing, uh, guys, you know, uh, because uh, if the primary pathology is in thyroid, then of course we can uh, check the TSH level. But for example, if the patient is a patient of secondary or tertiary hypothyroidism, so of course the pathology is either in the pituitary or either in the hypothalamus so in that case you know TSH is not, not reliable anymore of course we don't go for TSH in that case okay so like this is pretty much about uh, 
hypothyroidism, like things which you must know. There are many things written over in the slide, uh, of course, uh, like the factors that increase the requirement of T4, like in pregnancy, estrogen therapy or weight gain, of course, we have to increase the dose. And the drugs which can increase the kit like the breakdown of t4 so in these whenever the patient is on these drugs so you have to increase the level the dosage of thyroxine or all the things you know which can cause malabsorption of t4 or drugs with in, which can interfere with t4 absorption of course if the patient they take this drug in tablet form so when when, when you're taking something in tablet form um, what what will happen is simply if some you are taking some drug with that which is uh, stopping the absorption of thyroxine so the patient can go into again into hypothyroidism so that's why whenever anyone is taking thyroxine so we, we avoid certain drugs in those patients uh, that's an important point to remember so uh, mids edema coma we have already covered this one uh, yesterday um, there are many mnemonics to remember the features of uh, hypothyroidism or uh, like on internet you will find many uh, I don't think so uh, like to remember the features of hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism we must take help of any mnemonic because the features are so typical and so easy that uh, they can be easily remembered simply by uh, understanding how, how the disease develops and what is the function effect of thyroid hormone on different uh, cells of the body uh, now uh, the last thing uh, I would like to talk about is you know like this is all about thyroid uh, gland uh, the only thing which is left is uh, thyroid malignancies that should be that should be like covered in the surgical lectures mm, okay so thank you so much guys